October 5th, 2012, Friday. First team wanted their results and they wanted to go. Vacation started right after coach's class and they bounced in their seats at the thought of leaving. Miss Waldron started passing out grades to the class. Everyone did very well. You have exceeded my expectations. Virtuoso, you are testing as high as a 5 can in the smarts department. I wouldn't be surprised if you made a 6 designation by the time you leave Alpha. Thank you very much. Virtuoso had put all her concentration on our academic work these last few days. Darkspeed and she, solid 5 work. Midas did very respectable for an 11-year-old with a 4. Bioforce put a 6 effort behind her 3 intelligence and aced everything I sent her way. We may even have to retest you to see if you've hit a 4. Miss Waldron stopped in front of Olympian. I failed, didn't I? Olympian said. On the contrary, you did very well. In fact, I think you have more of your brother Achilles in you than you think. Olympian blushed under the compliment. Thank you. I feel privileged to have had this time with you. I look forward to our following years together. Miss Waldron picked up her things and headed to the door as the bots came in with the food cart. Now, I don't have coach's class, so you'll excuse me if I get a head start to the sparrows. Miss Waldron flashed a happy face as she left the room. Connors was in the room before they could get their food or talk. Get your stuff while I talk. I don't have combat stuff to go over, just rules of how to behave in public. Like don't show off to your friends and what to say if people ask where you've been. Midas listened out of habit. He wasn't thinking of coming back and didn't think what was being said applied to him. To him, Connors was droning on, teaching something to these other kids who would be superheroes. Virtuoso felt like something wasn't quite right with her friend and started listening in on his thoughts. Her mouth went wide when she heard. How could I have missed this, she thought. Then she remembered how hard she worked on her finals. Feeling guilty for not spotting his troubles earlier, she started to go through his memories from the night before. Near the end of class, Connors gave one more announcement. You don't have to go the Sparrow route to Sydney. If you want Virtuosa to teleport you home directly, I'm all right with that. Have a good vacation. Class dismissed. First team started to instinctively gather around Virtuoso. You'll all have to walk back to the dorms. I have to speak to Coach before I leave, she said. Making me use my own legs? Olympian joked. Darkspeed, race you. No. The standard Darkspeed thought to himself. We don't want sonic booms and disruptions while everyone's trying to get out of here. Fine, be the grown-up. Connors waited until only Virtuoso was left in the room. What's on your mind? It's Midas. He doesn't plan on coming back from vacation, she said. I know. You do? How? He's not leaving anything of his here. It's always a bad sign. But maybe you can help me. He was fine a few days ago. What triggered this? Virtuoso told him about what Olympian said and the parts that Midas heard out of context. He stayed in his room and cried after that. He feels betrayed, like we were never his friends. He started to think that's how we always talk about him and he's wrong. Connors listened calmly as she spoke. I want you to tell him that I need to see him and you can't teleport him home until after I speak to him. Now, go take everyone else home. Are you sure you don't want me to talk to him? I think I can help. No, say nothing to him about this. Just tell him he has to wait. I'll be there in ten minutes, so get the other four home. Virtuoso didn't say goodbye. She just teleported to the dorm common room. Who wants to go home first? Darkspeed had all his things ready, but could see that the others really wanted to get out of there first. I'll go last. How about ladies first? What happened to equality? Olympian said with bags in each hand. It goes out the window if girls get to go to the front of the line, Bioforce said as she stepped in front of Virtuoso. Virtuoso vanished and reappeared next to she. You have everything? All set. She responded. Olympian was standing next to the other boys, waiting for his turn. Virtuoso teleported in and out so quick it looked like Olympian disintegrated. Virtuoso rematerialized with a smile. He can walk back from the trees with his own legs. Midas next, Darkspeed said. No, Coach is coming over to talk to him, so you're next, Virtuoso said as normal as she could. Okay, Joseph, I'll see you in 16 days. Virtuoso touched his shoulder and said, Counting the days before you're even gone? you got it bad. Midas was left alone in the room with his luggage. Virtuoso didn't teleport back right away. Midas started to suspect that she had read his mind. She told Connors everything. I bet he's on his way here to talk to me right now. He started to become angry as he thought of the things about to happen. Virtuoso teleported in after a few more minutes and said, Is Connors here yet? No. Why is he coming? Midas asked. 
He said I wasn't supposed to take you home until he talked to you. That wasn't my question. Did you talk to him about something? Virtuosa was on the spot with her friend and didn't know what to say. Suddenly, she remembered her secrets training from her first week there. If I'm told not to talk about something and I say I won't, anyone who asks me to talk about it is asking me to lie to the first person. Midas knew the code they were taught and he knew he would get nothing out of her. He simply looked at her in disgust and plopped on the couch. Midas felt even more betrayed and stared at the ceiling, not looking at Virtuoso. Connors walked into the room and looked at the two. Virtuoso, go home. Don't call or use your telepathy. Just enjoy your vacation. What about Joseph? She asked. Just do as I say. I'll take him home later. Midas sat up and stared at his coach. Virtuoso disappeared without saying anything as Midas stood. I was told I didn't have to stay here after I learned to control my powers. That's true, but as your coach, I want to ask you a favor before you leave, Connor said calmly. What's that? Midas said softly, looking for the trap. I know you're planning on not coming back to Alpha, and I know why. I ask that you give me two hours before you make any decisions. There are some things, secrets, that you need to know before you make any choices. What kind of things? Say you'll stay for two hours, and I'll tell you. Midas looked down at the clothes he was wearing, the ones Virtuoso had made for him. He wanted to be gone in the worst way, but he wanted to know what he was talking about. Okay, you've got me for two more hours. Good, follow me. Connors exited their dorm and walked up to his apartment. We have to start in here. Midas had not seen the inside of Connors' apartment since he made it. The decorations were slightly different. There was a large wall tapestry of the first team of six and a bronze statue of an old-time hero he didn't recognize. Who's that statue of? Stan the Man. When he was young, Connors led him right up to the statue. Is that what you wanted to show me? No, this is what I wanted to show you. Connors placed his right hand flush on the flat part of the statue's chest. Then the eyes of the statue glowed in electric blue. Voice code Connors. Activate first team of six. Midas watched as the tapestry that was on the wall faded and a small port appeared. What was that? A small hollow G field around the portal to hide it. This is too small to be a port. The ports I saw were huge with rooms full of stuff to make them work. This port only accepts an incoming connect, one from a remote location. Voice code Connors, activate port. Midas watched as the slate gray panel faded into the image of a shiny steel room. Are we going there? That is where we will find what I need to show you. Connors stepped through the port and looked back into his apartment at Midas. Come on. Midas followed Connors into the room and looked around at the ten-foot cube. What's supposed to be in here? Watch, and don't ever do this by yourself. The room is set to kill anyone that's not me. Connors pushed his hand against one wall, and a panel slid in. Once his arm was halfway in, steel plates closed in around his arm, and Midas heard electricity crackle inside. What's going on? There's a thing you have to do with your hand in here, but if you're not as invulnerable as me, you lose your hand, Connors said calmly. Would Olympian lose his hand? Oh yes. You need my handprint, DNA, voice print, and vulnerability, and you need to make electricity like me to get in. Important stuff in here. The port behind them disappeared and a new one appeared. Midas looked into this new room. He saw a large cavernous area with things spread out over hundreds of feet. That's where we're going? That's it. Connor's hand was released and he walked through to this new room. Come on, two hours, remember? What is this place? Midas looked up at the ceiling. It was once molten iron formed around in a perfect half circle. Midas wondered how we made the iron dome. We are about as deep in the earth's crust as you can get without the temperature getting too hot for the computers. There are even vacuum gaps between layers of iron to try to keep this place cool. Come on over here. This is a good place to start. Midas followed Connors over to a display case with a pristine set of black and gold armor inside. Is that what I think it is? the last set of armor that Omni wore. He placed it here when he retired. In fact, he built this place. It was his last secret lair. This is where he gave me one last task to perform. One more thing to do before I can leave my post. What's that? Might have said with great curiosity. Let me give you a little history first. Come on over here. Connors led Midas to a large computer console. This is how I know what I'm recruiting. This supercomputer is more powerful than anything anyone else has. Even the HU techs? Midas said in disbelief. 